Thanks for joining today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how we brought independent grocery stores online during the pandemic um, and kind of the, the state of the market going forward and where we think, see things going. Uh, first, a little background on me. Uh, I grew up in the industry, so I know the grocery market very well. Started working in my parents' grocery store in New York City when I was uh, eight years old, stocking the shelves and delivering groceries. Uh, you know, learned the business and then went away to college, started an online college textbook marketplace back in 2001 and bootstrapped that a million customers and 50,000 booksellers nationwide. Um, then sold the company to Simple Tuition, which is an online marketplace for student loans. Um, and then as I was, I was thinking about my next venture, I went into my father's store and I realized that a lot of things he was doing was still in the stone age. He didn't have uh, point of sale system, social media, e-commerce, any of that. So I decided to build it for him. Um, so that's kind of a, a brief background there. Uh, and what we built essentially at that time is we built an online marketplace platform for independent grocers. We thought, why just help one merchant like my dad? Why not help 50,000 independent grocery stores nationwide? And believe it or not, independent grocery stores make up more than half of the stores in America. They don't have half of the market share, but they have half of the physical presence. They're approximately 20% of the market share. So this is a $850 billion market where the independents have uh, about 20%. Uh, so we, we started the company back in September of 2015. Uh, as I mentioned, very much uh, around e-commerce and delivery platform for them to kind of get their business online, removing the barriers to entry, allowing them to have you know, competitive offering compared to the big chain. Uh, you know, the, the platform has been built exclusively for independent grocers, so we don't work with any big chains today. Uh, you know, we aim to kind of give the power back to the little guy and, and allowing them to get all of their products online, maintain inventory and pricing, have very competitive marketing, and also a membership program for consumers. Uh, so we currently have about 1,500 merchants in 46 states. Uh, this has grown a lot over the past several months. I think pre-COVID, it might have been something like 25 states. So it was a rapid expansion during that period of time. And we have over 100 delivery couriers through our platform. So these couriers um, are sourced through third parties like DoorDash and Postmates. Um, and they're fu fully embedded and integrated into the platform. So uh, a little bit more of an overview of the market. Uh, you can see on, you know, the grocery sales in the United States is approximately $850 billion. And, uh, last year, pre COVID, it was estimated, uh, that we were going to get to about a hundred billion in sales by 2025, which is approximately 12% of the grocery industry. And I think that we're well past that now. COVID definitely, uh, expedited growth of the online market. Um, and you can see here on the right is that online grocery stores, uh, from independent grocers, uh, is approximately 30% of the market. So it's essentially a $30 billion total addressable market that Mercado is, is focused on today. Now, during the pandemic, you could see this chart here, but it was a wild period of time. Um, at our company, we, we grew significantly. We grew about um, uh, 50X in the matter of four weeks. Uh, so this is a chart that shows you visitor growth month over month. So you can see in March, uh, Mercado was actually the fastest growing uh, food e-commerce company in the country. Uh, so you can see there in the, in, on the right. Uh, and, you know, after March, things pulled back a little bit because customers, you know, they found their quote unquote dance partner of which company they wanted to work with. And the volume pulled back a little bit. And also... Uh, in March and April, you had the quarantine that was in place. So people, they, people weren't going outside, restaurants were closed down. So it's really, you know, the world gravitated towards online grocery to kind of to feed them and their families. So this is where we saw this massive growth. And, um, and you know, we, we've maintained a large portion of that on the platform. So to give you a breakdown of the types of services that the specialty food stores and independent grocers have out there, there's really three types of platforms. Uh, one is a, a platform as a service, which is what we offer at Mercado. Uh, next is there's a marketplace platforms like Instacart and Shift out there. And then third are, is homegrown software where people can build their own platforms. They can use you know, white labeling software to build their own e-commerce. 
uh, what we we offer the market is we we give them a hundred percent control over their their online store. Uh, what is the aesthetic of it? You know, uploading logos and pictures and product images and uh, sorting the products in the page and all that stuff. Uh, we also provide them with customized marketing, uh, you know, to the customers in their area. So we're leveraging their brand and their product, and they get a say in terms of how we do that. Uh, we also uh, have a fully managed delivery fleet. So we, we actually manage all of the logistics for them. So they don't have to track the deliveries minute by minute. We have a team that's tracking those logistics. Uh, and we automatically dispatch the orders based on when the orders are marked as ready in the store. And we also give stores access to their consumer data, which is really very critical. So they can get access to who are the customers shopping on the platform? Where are they shopping from? What types of products are they looking for? So all those things are very important for the store to understand, you know, how could they better market their business? Um, and also how can they, you know, find more customers and find, you know, the right products to put on the shelves. So uh, to go into a little more detail in terms of how do we get the stores online and what do we do is, you know, we're a complete e-commerce platform. We make it very easy for the store to get their products online. We have a centralized product database of over a million products. So everything from, you know, gala apples to filet mignon to a box of Cheerios. We'll take a download from a point of sale system. We'll map it to our database. And within minutes, we'll, get their, we'll be able to get all their products online and mapped to our system. And once those products are up and running, we were integrated with just about every point of system out there. So it allows us to sync inventory and pricing for the stores. Um, and then once all of that is up and running, we light up the marketing. We provide the stores with marketing materials for their store, posters, flyers, stickers, all those things to leverage their in-store experience. Uh, we also uh, provide them with a uh, white labeled shopping experience to go on their own website. Uh, as well as lighting up digital ads in all the major online channels like you know Google, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and then once the orders roll in, the stores are picking, packing the goods in their own store. And we think this is really, really important because the, the people that work at the store know their stores really well and they know the customers really well. So we think that they do the best job at picking and packing on behalf of their stores. Um, and then once the stores are driving value on the platform, we're able to provide them with data on what are their customers searching for that they don't have in stock? What are the customers asking for to be inside their store and what, you know, they, they could sell? Uh, so that's also a really important part of uh, the offering that we provide. Uh, so, you know, bringing that experience online, it's not just about bringing the products online, but it's bringing the entire experience. Uh, people shop at independent grocers for certain reasons, right? Because it's either the quality of the product, the selection of those products, the unique things that they make, whether, you know, carefully sourced or are they prepared foods that are targeted towards those neighborhoods and also the relationships that those stores provide. So through our platform, we let, you know, the customer interact with the store through the platform so they can add, you know, special instructions on products and they can message back and forth in that respect. Uh, if they want replacements, they can specify what those replacements might be. Uh, but it's really about bringing that in-store experience online. Uh, the next component to elaborate more on is delivery and fulfillment on their terms. Um, a key, a key for this is really during the pandemic where, you know, the stores couldn't even handle all the volume and we give stores the ability to throttle that volume. So they could say how many orders do they have want to have per hour. So what we were doing is that, you know, we were, we were steadily working on helping stores become more efficient. So we had stores at the beginning of the pandemic who couldn't process more than 10 orders per hour, um, where you know weeks later, we had them processing 50 orders per hour. Uh, so really allowing them to accelerate, leverage their existing workforce, letting them to light up you know, additional workers in the store with varying degrees of permissions and how they pick and pack, uh, educating them on the experience, allowing them to pack multiple orders simultaneously. Uh, but really, that's, that's a big, big part of it and, and allowing them to say, OK, I don't want more than this many orders per hour. So what would happen in those scenarios is that when, uh, you know, a store is over capacity, then the customer would have a delivery slot that's available in the next hour or the hour after that. Um, so that allows them to really throttle out the volume and make make their whole process really doable for the store. Uh, next is to talk a little bit more 
you know, we currently have uh, tens of millions of consumer shoppers that are on Mercado each month. So a tremendous amount of traffic. Um, and our team, it really helps them, the stores drive more volume. So as soon as an independent grocer gets on the platform, they get access to all of those customers in the area. They also simultaneously have the ability to put a white label experience in their site. So they really get the best of both worlds. One where they can leverage their own brand and their own platform and the other where they get to leverage the entire marketplace experience uh, within their market. Uh, we also provide promotional discounts for the stores uh, to offer to their customers. They get their own specialized promotional codes. Um, we also you know, have account managers for them and dedicated customer service teams. So these are all really critical aspects, especially during you know, the, the initial rise of COVID uh, where the volume spiked through the roof overnight. Uh, it was actually really challenging for us to be able to staff up as fast as we needed to. Uh, you know, in the early stages, you know, when we started off, we had, you know, dozens of employees and we, we then surpassed the hundreds of employees. So we really, you know, grew by order of magnitude on all areas of the business, not just sales, not just merchants, but also the customer service and the account management staff had to, had to grow as well. And that's really a part of the value added service that we provide to the stores. So uh, please keep posting questions. I'm gonna answer them all at the end. I wanna kind of flow through this and then I'll kind of rip through them um, in approximately 15 to 20 minutes from now. Uh, the next program I wanted to talk about is our consumer membership program. So this is essentially the, an Amazon -like, Prime-like product for the independent grocer. So customers can pay $8 uh, a month billed annually, which is $96 a year, and they can get unlimited free delivery for all the stores within their neighborhood. And if they pay $19 a month, which, which is $228 billed annually, then they get unlimited free delivery for all of the stores within their city, right? So there's two different regions. And this program has been a huge success. Uh, this grew tremendously during, during COVID, uh, whereby we've, we've, we onboarded a uh, tremendous amount of consumer members. Um, this process uh, of onboarding new members is built into our checkout experience. So every customer gets a free trial to our Mercado Green membership on their first order for, for the first 14 days. So they could try it for 14 days and get as many deliveries as they want in, in that period of time. And then they can choose to uh, cancel it if they want. Uh, you know, we do see a tremendous uptick in terms of uh, the amount of orders placed per customer when they on the membership program approximately 500% uh, higher order frequency from customers with membership. So this is a really key aspect to uh, the offering that we provide to independent grocers. Wanted to provide a, a brief case study here that we had. This is a store uh, in Chicago for over 30 years uh, called Bockwinkles. Uh, you know, it was, it was early in the pandemic in, uh, you know, in the middle of March and they needed to get online. And they need to find a solution that would help them not only get online right, but get online quickly. So, uh, you know, they, they checked out a lot of different platforms out there, you know, in terms of building their own platform, uh, pursuing, you know, what would it look like to go on Instacart? And they found that nobody can get them online quickly enough. Um, and we were able to do that really, really quick. So within, uh, I think it was approximately uh, two weeks to launch the store, uh, we got them to a million dollar sales run rate. So essentially, we help them build a million dollar e-commerce business with a single store location in, in less than two weeks. So that's super exciting. Um, and for me personally, that, that felt really, really good helping independent grocers that are at a disadvantage compared to the big chain, being able to get online really quickly, adapt to the market, but then also be able to provide the con convenience of delivery to all of their customers so rapidly and, and keeping their customers safe as well. Uh, so, yeah, these are the steps to launch. Uh, we, we basically uh, get a file from the store on, their, on, on what they're looking for in terms of which product. Uh, we upload that product list to our database for a million products that we have in our catalog. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a catalog of, of everything from gala apples, filet mignon, a box of Cheerios, everything you could imagine. And then when we upload that file, uh, it maps to our database. Now it looks at product codes of all different sorts. It uses machine learning that looks at product names and descriptions and pricing to, to rapidly map that inventory set. And once the inventory set is, is, uh, is built into our system, then easily map back to the point of sale system so that we can look at, you know, uh, is the product still in stock? Did the price change? 
So we then will rapidly be able to keep the product pricing up to date and quantity in sync. Um, and, and then once we have that in place, we launch a store. And actually, uh, I believe we launched hundreds of stores during the pandemic within 20 years. So uh, this is really our response system in terms of how do we get them online really quickly. And in, in regards to getting them online that fast, you know, it essentially allowed us to get about 90% of their products online that quickly. And then the last 10% would take a week or two to get the rest. So it was a way to get the essentials online super quick and then f fast follow with the rest of that product set. Uh, so that's pretty much it in the presentation. Now, you know, I wanted to be able to uh, jump into QA um, and answer any, any questions that people may have. So I guess I'll, I'll just start from the top here. Um, so one of the first questions here from Joel is, uh, do we know what the percentage of convenience store deliveries like a 7-Eleven? Um, we, we actually don't have any convenience stores in the platform. Uh, and it's, it's really only specialty grocers and independent grocers. So essentially your, you know, butcher shops, seafood markets. Another unique thing that we have is, uh, we have public markets coming online, like the Chelsea Market, Reading Terminal Market, and LA Farmers Market. Uh, they'll bring in all the stores in their entire um, public market, and we'll facilitate delivery, aggregated delivery from all of those stores. But there are no convenience stores. Uh, so next question here from Harry. Uh, thanks, Harry. Um, do you guys sign up the 100,000 couriers directly, or do you bring them on board through partners? Uh, yeah, they're all through partners. We actually don't have a single delivery courier that we signed up directly. Uh, we work with all the restaurant delivery courier companies out there and, and also uh, the rideshare platforms as well. have now opened up their, uh, their, the their um, uh, drivers to the de grocery delivery as well. So we have a long list of, of couriers. Uh, there's national partners, there's regional partners, but uh, we've built our own internal delivery exchange that aggregates them all. So that we're we're leveraging the best partner uh, for the best distance in the right area with the right level of service. Uh, next question from Trey here is that uh, what is the ideal size store for the platform? Um, I'd say in terms of getting the most value and driving the most volume is you know high SKU count, high quality store. So you know essentially stores that have a large amount of ratings and reviews online, stores that have over four stars um and hundreds of reviews that also have tens of thousands of products and having tens of thousands of products allows us to advertise all of those items i mean we're bidding on the keywords of all the different product names uh we're also um you know uh able to get really granular on the categories that they sell and 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 so on but also a larger skew count store allows us to provide a, a much broader offering an all-encompassing offering to the customer so they can get everything they need in one shopping experience. So, so yeah, so highly rated, highly reviewed, tens of thousands of products. Those are the ones that do really well. Um, and I guess on the other end of it, for a smaller store, if they don't have a lot of products, they have to be really good, right? They have to have, you know, four and a half stars, five star stores, and these are butcher shops and seafood markets and so on. Uh, they also do really, really well. So it's, it's high skew count quality and high quality, low skew count. Uh, next question here is that uh, from Trey again is uh, how long does onboarding take? I mentioned this a couple times. It's really uh, can be 24 hours to get the the core of their assets online, the core of their product, about 90%. And then after that, uh, approximately two weeks to get every single item in their store. And to be clear on what every single item is, is uh, it may not be what you're thinking. It's every possible item in that store, right? So it's grocery items, prepared foods, private labels, catering alcohol, everything that they sell gets online. And some of those products have nuances, right? So uh, for alcohol, you have to have a liquor license. For catering, you have to have all sorts of different adjustments in terms of large orders. You might need more lead time. Uh, and then prepared foods have their own uh, uh, uniqueness as well. But we built a platform that handles all the nuances of all the categories so that we can have a one-stop shop for the customer. Um, so that, that really allows them to get everything everything in the store. Uh, and within two weeks, as I mentioned. Um, next question from Harry is, is how do you get the grocers on so quickly versus say Instacart? I think I've, I answered that, Harry, let me know if, if I missed something. 
Um, but I think, uh, you know, our priority is, is bringing smaller stores online. Uh, Instacart will, will go after stores that have a thousand plus locations and get them online and in the masses. Uh, we have a much more detailed approach to bringing on specialized inventory, specialized settings, working with the stores, uh, and really replicating that online experience that's unique to every single location. So I think it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, not just in terms of our process, but also in terms of the headcount. Um, believe it or not, a company like Instacart, uh, we, we have, you know, probably five to 10 times more people that are onboarding stores because we're onboarding so many. Um, with 1,500 different banners on the platform, that's significantly higher than what Instacart has. Instacart may have uh, 500 banners or something like that. Um, so we're, we're bringing on, you know, lots of indiv individual store locations. So different level of service. Uh, a lot more hand-holding that uh, your Instacarts uh, won't do. Uh, next question here from Joel is, um, uh, I know many of them are getting into deliveries. I don't know if that's a question or more of a statement. Um, I, the stores, uh, some of them are doing deliveries. Uh, we actually do enable the stores to do their own deliveries on our platform. Uh, they can, we call it owning your own neighborhood. So we have stores that'll say, I'd like to have a one mile radius of delivery. I'll take care of those. They can even specify how much money they want to charge if they want to charge it. Uh, we think it's really valuable for the store to be able to deliver. And, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I used to deliver to, you know, the old ladies in the neighborhood. They would ask me to take out the trash. You know, I, I still know them uh, today, a lot of these old ladies. So it, it, it's kind of nice, it's like a family feel when you have an independent grocery business. So, uh, you know, that's where a lot of the businesses like to do deliveries in their own zip code or two or one or two mile radius of their store. So our platform does enable that where they can pick and choose where they do want to deliver. Um, so uh, next question uh, from Joel, um, uh, what percentage of deliveries uh, via e-bike, scooter, uh, moped or car? Uh, most of our deliveries I would say are uh, by bicycle. Um, especially in highly densely populated uh, urban areas. Uh, the less urban the area is, uh, the less of the population density, the more that we see cars. So for example, Manhattan is almost exclusively cars. Obviously also it's extremely hard to park in your normal world. Maybe it's different now with COVID. Um, and then if you get to a market more like Los Angeles or San Diego, you'll see more cars, um, but it really varies uh, by market to market. Uh, not really sure there, uh, Harry had a question like uh, DoorDash Drive. Uh, DoorDash, DoorDash is one of the platforms that we use. Maybe that's kind of what you're implying, but yeah, uh, DoorDash is one of the uh, many courier networks that we have plugged into the platform. Uh, next, I have uh, Pompillo here. Um, so uh, what is the most difficult thing while onboarding a new merchant? I'd say it's really just getting the file because uh, most of the merchants aren't uh, extremely tech savvy. So being able to get that file extrapolated at their point of sale system could be a little bit tricky. So uh, we have to handhold them sometimes and, and instruct them. And by, you know, at, at this point, we now know each of the POS systems pretty well. So we can tell them, you know, click on this, click on that, click on that, now download, now give us a file. So, you know, that's, that's kind of uh, one of the more complicated things is actually getting the file. Once we have the file, then the, the process is quick because uh, you know, we're onboarding hundreds and hundreds of stores. So it's it's a very uh, well-tuned process at this moment, uh, besides getting the file. Um, okay, next question here. Uh, Adam Sorkin, um, uh, what boutique shops and farmer's markets? Um, a lot of the value is in the experience. It's a way to communicate some of that care and specialness via delivery. Uh, yeah, so part of that, I guess, is in the platform, and we do work very closely. Uh, you know, one of the markets we work most closely with is the Reading Terminal Market in Philadelphia. Um, really hands-on and personal feel that they have. Um, so there's things that that we'll do with them, putting special touches into the orders. They're they're packaging all the orders. They're consolidating all the orders within their facility. You know, at you know at certain times they'll put handwritten notes in certain orders for new customers or for the return customer or it's a holiday. Um, but it's really a, a, the big part of the special the fulfillment process. And maybe it's in relation to packaging it. Maybe it's in relation if something's not in stock and giving them a phone call and not just saying, we don't have this, what would you like? But saying, we don't have this and coming to the table with recommendations that you would get when you would come into the store and saying, you know, we, we don't have, uh, uh, you know, veal chops. Uh, do you want this other item that would be suitable in a replacement of veal chops, for example? 
So I think that's a big part of it is that is that you know allowing them to maintain that communication. And it's one of the things that we hear from a lot of independent grocers is they really fear being disconnected, being commoditized under the platforms, right? Where a shopper will come in, a shopper will pick and pack in their store, a shopper will talk to their customer, but through our system, our merchants are talking to the customers. Uh, after every order, the customer will rate their order. The customer, the merchant then has an has a opportunity to respond to comments and have an interaction with the customer so that next time, if they didn't get something perfect, they can get it perfect next time. Um, so that's really, I guess, how we do that there. Um, and there's a lot more to come, right? We're in the early stages of online food ordering. I think that uh, there's a world of improvements that could be had on, on all sorts of platforms. And we have all of these things in our pipeline in terms of instead of ordering by the ingredient, ordering by the recipe, uh, being able to un understand people's dietary preferences, what they like to eat, if they're allergic to something, if they're you know gluten-free or however what their habits are. So there's ways to make the experience much more special. But at the core of our experience and what makes us unique is we work with independence where relationship matters. So everywhere we can, we try to leverage that relationship and provide that greatness back to the customer. Um, so uh, next question here. See, you got to scroll here. Um, from Joel. Uh, uh, so yeah, so if it's a larger delivery, we actually do specify to the courier networks that we would need a car or an SUV. Um, and we do that for if there's catering orders or if there are orders that have several bags. So the stores will specify how many bags it'll be. Because obviously if you're, you know, delivering a, a platter of food or, or something, or, you know, it's, there's seven bags, uh, you don't want a bicycle, a person on the bicycle coming. So that's when we'll automatically dispatch through the platform. Uh, next question from Matt is, uh, what are the typical gross margins of your specialty store partner? So, it varies, right? So if you think about it, you know, you'll look at your Whole Foods of the world where they have approximately 32% uh, gross margins in their business. And uh, specialty food stores will have a little bit higher. So I think it depends on the level of specialty. If you talk about a small format store that is, you know, really niche, butcher shop, seafood market, uh, produce market, something that's super niche, it could be higher than 33%. But when you get to the bigger format stores, yeah, they're, they're within range. 30 to 40% gross margins on average for those types of stores. There are categories in the store that are a lot tighter. And I think what you see a lot of confusion here in the market, and when you look at independent grocers, they'll typically talk about slim net, you know, net margin, profit margins. Um, but their gross margins are, are in the low 30s. And maybe in some cases, they're high 20s. Um, and there are some product categories in the store that are lower margin. But on average, you know, they make up for it with certain specialty products, prepared foods, which will generally be higher. Okay. Uh, from next question is from David. Uh, what internal KPIs do you use and rank platform grocers to determine uh, who is a good partner or is that just determined by customer review? So yeah, good question, David. You seem to know this pretty well. Uh, so it's a really strong internal KPI, as David mentioned, is that the customer reviews, right? So we'll see what is the average review and, and what is the velocity of that, that score? And is it trending? Uh, we'll also look at fulfillment rate. We'll look at the net promoter score. Um, so those are really important things. We're also going to look at other aspects of the overall consumer experience, to assess where we can improve. Um, we're actually in the process of improving a platform called Delighted, which we think is really good. And Delighted allows us to get a lot more granular in assessing net promoter score in different parts of the user experience. But you know, with typical online platforms, the consumer rating is where it's at, and that allows us to really assess very granularly on a merchant by merchant basis. Uh, next question is from Kevin. Um, can you talk about how Mercado uses consumer data to inform marketing to increase repeat business? Uh, so, you know, obviously we're looking at reorder rates and we're seeing, uh, you know, how, how, uh, how long it takes a customer to come back to the platform. So, for example, if somebody placed an order and they didn't shop in a month, that gives us a, a you know, kind of a data to say we should remarket to that customer to keep them shopping. Typically, if a customer is not shopping over a period of two weeks, we're going to reach back out and we're going to be marketing to them to keep them active on the platform. So this is a really powerful component for the independent grocers because not just are we doing top of the funnel marketing, but we're doing retention marketing. And it's not just about advertising. It's also about, uh, you know, email, 
push notifications, SMS advertising, really to communicate to the customer in the platform that they're best communicated to, um, to really maintain that um, high level of retention rate on the platform. Um, so uh, Pompello, next question here is, what about acquisition uh, of the buyers? Does it, does it come from you, uh, from the merchants, or is it organic? So it's really, it's really truly a blend. Um, I'd say typically it's like a, it's a third, a third, a third that we see, um, and they kind of all work in complementary of each other. So uh, you know we will do uh, advertising, we will promote on Google and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and 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 you know mobile app advertising, all of that. Um, but that goes in complement with the stores, you know, posting on their own website and doing their own marketing and putting materials in the store. And the third area is organic. And I think the organic, uh, you know, obviously word of mouth, but also SEO is a really powerful component. We've we've uh, achieved pretty strong rankings. I think that we're, we're pretty much on the first page for grocery delivery everywhere in the country. Uh, and the same holds true for neighborhoods, cities, products, and all the different ways that one could SEO a grocery delivery platform. Okay. Uh, next question here, and I think this is the last one until you guys enter more. This is from Matt. Is what is a good example uh, to look at of a white label customer on your platform? Um, so I would say that um, you could probably look at uh, Valley Farm Market in San Diego. That's one that we look at uh, pretty often. Um, I'd have to get back to you on some of the, who the some of the few others are. Uh, we're actually in the process of building a more advanced experience than we have today. Um, one where we're, we're not just uh, embedding an iframe, because currently we embed an iframe into their platform, but uh, we're moving to a fully uh, white label experience where we're going to be plugging into their into their uh, domain, essentially a subdomain. Uh, next uh, from Miko. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, how do you make sure a store's inventory is updated in Mercado? Store managers can update it on their side, or do you have that process automated? So yes and yes. So uh, we created a platform, a uh, dashboard uh, inventory module for the merchants where they can go in um, and they can uh, update their own inventory. So they can very easily mark something in stock, out of stock. When they process an order, they could say, this item's out of stock, Please out of stock it for 24 hours. Please out of stock it for seven days. Please out of stock it forever. So really, we've created multiple touch points to be able to um, allow them to maintain the inventory through the platform. On the other end, we've also automated it, and the automations depend on you know uh, the integrations that we have with the respective merchants, and we use we will use their data files to to keep uh, inventory in stock. Okay. Uh, next question here from Kurt. Uh, well, thanks for your session. Thanks for joining. Um, what are your thoughts on including uh, fresh products on your platform, such as hot, prepared foods, challenges, and opportunities? So uh, yes, we do. Uh, we we put hot foods and prepared foods on the platform, um, and it's a it's a good part of the business. Uh, we don't strive to lean in too much in that category in terms of adding stores that are exclusively hot and prepared. We think that. Uh, there are a, uh, a handful of multi-billion dollar players out there that are bringing restaurants online with prepared food. So we don't aim to be another player in that mix. Uh, it's really competitive there. Um, but some of the challenges there is that um, actually, you know, hot foods is probably one of the more complicated things because if you think about it uh, with grocery, we're dealing with all sorts of temperatures and we're dealing with stuff that is room temperature, stuff that has to be cold and stuff that has to be hot. Right. So when you're dealing with stuff that is room temperature and cold, that's easier, right? Because you could actually put it in the fridge or leave it stored outside. But when it's the foods are warm, it, you have to deliver it instantly. So uh, this is where it's harder for stores to coordinate the hot foods. And essentially what you'll see stores do is they'll pick and pack the dry goods. Then they'll get then they'll have the goods that are refrigerated. They'll leave them in the refrigerator. And then when it comes time for the order being ready, they'll prepare the hot foods, put it all together. So. Yeah, the hot foods make it a little more complicated and the dynamics of all of this um, to make sure that the hot food gets there hot. Uh, some, of the, some of the stores know how to package appropriately where they can tin foil or they have uh, you know, uh, heat controlling bags so they could put it in there and, and the food can stay hot upon arrival. 
Uh, cool. So uh, feel free to post any other questions. Uh, there's no more questions out there. I really appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, happy to answer anything. Feel free to shoot. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, guys. You can see on the screen, um, Bobby B. Brannigan on LinkedIn. Um, happy to talk about any ways to partner. Um, you know, we've grown our company significantly and we aim to, you know, help small businesses. So small businesses at the core of what we do. So, um, you know, especially if there's small businesses to help, that's what we're here. Um, this is why we started the company because we wanted to have a strong mission around helping the less fortunate little guy and helping them compete with the giants. Cool, so uh, Matt uh, asked for some um, thoughts on Amazon Fresh and kind of the lay of the landscape. So I can speak to that. Um, I have my own predictions on how things will unveil and where things will go. Um, I think, you know, Amazon had had, you know, they, they obviously, we everybody knows about the Whole Foods acquisition that they made. Um, a little bit of, you know, they're having some challenges there in terms of grocery is a little more complicated than um, different types of products that are more shelf stable. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they're building that business and they will continue to grow it. Um, you know, and I think, you know, Amazon is definitely a, a player in the market and they will continue to be. I think that the independent grocers carry a very special offering whereby they have, you know, well, well crafted products that are handpicked, high quality, geared towards neighborhoods. Um, they have people that have relationships that know the customer. And that's what we found is that customers want to shop in the place that they trust. Ultimately, they're feeding their family and they don't want to waver in terms of quality. Uh, so I think, you know, Amazon Fresh will continue to grow. It's a big market out there. And I think the people that will have the toughest time against Amazon are going to be companies like the big chains out there that are, you know, driving low prices on commoditized products. Um, you know, your Kroger's of the world, Costco's and so on. Um, and I think also, you know, Amazon will be competing, uh, you know, especially going forward with Instacart. Um, I think Instacart has built a really, really strong platform and that's definitely going to be a head to head battle with, with Amazon. But I think for, for independence, I think we have a strong position. Um, I think they'll be around for a very, very long time. And Part of our, our dream here for the business is to help see a resurgence of independence. Um, and what we aim to do is be able to, you know, enable um, people in the community to build their own grocery store. And essentially having Mercado being a grocery store in a box where somebody can say, I wanna open a store, here's what I'd like to sell, what is the right neighborhood, what is the product selection, buy it through the platform, buy it all with one click, how do I price it? Um, having multi, you know, omni-channel experience, in store online. So that's really where we focus on is we want to help uh, enable people to support their community and have, uh, you know, and see this resurgence of independence. Thank you so much, Bobby. That was really cool. Um, if anyone has any more questions, now's your time to get them in. Hurry up. Other, <laughs> otherwise, um, feel free to go into the networking session or take a break. We, we have another panel coming up, another workshop with Bbot uh, talking about QR codes at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, but yeah, thanks again, Bobby. Well done. Uh, of course. Thank you. Bring all that stuff. Uh, anyone? Mm -hmm. Final final questions. Going once, going twice. Oh, oh. here we go. Is there a churn rate? Uh, churn rate is very low. We have actually a negative churn during COVID. Obviously, you can imagine anybody who decided to pause came back during COVID because they wanted to get their store back online. Um, so very, very, very little churn. Uh, we make it very easy to manage the platform. 
Um, I guess some of the, the uh, things to mention around that is that you could get an order any way that you want it. If you want to get a fax pop out of the wall, that could happen. So it's really pretty seamless in a store's experience. It's not a ton of overhead to keep us up and running. Um, so that's the kind of the, the churn scenario, very, very low. Um, Adam, next question, is there an equivalent of a ghost kitchen in the specialty grocery market? So uh, that's a good one. Um, I haven't seen um, uh, kind of the ghost ghost kitchen uh, in, in grocery, generally we'll call them dark stores. Um, we have seen a lot of people coming onto our platform and saying, I'm opening a dark, dark store, can I be on Mercado? And we do facilitate that. So if people wanna quickly stand up a store, um, during COVID, we've, we've received, uh, maybe I'd say a dozen or so dark stores that popped up. Wow. Uh, but it's a very, very interesting opportunity. Well, you saw the cr cluster truck, uh, Kroger announcement where they're going to be putting cluster trucks, ghost kitchens, uh, and about, I think a thousand square foot of the Kroger store in two different locations. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I guess it's smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm seeing that blurring happening more and more with you know, CPG and, and prepared meals. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I agree. All right, guys, any more questions? All right. Well, we won't take up any more of your time, Bobby. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, do we have another one? American, <laughs> something about Americans. <laughs> Americans move 11.3 times in their lifetime. Remote work could make people much moving much more or less. Do you think this could help in making communities stronger? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I don't think it, this will actually change people from moving. I think it's kind of cool. That, like, I think it's like the American lifestyle, like this nomad life of traveling around. I think it's actually pretty cool. Um, I think Mercado allows you to absorb your community real quick. Right, because you could jump on Mercado, you could see who the stores are, you could shop local. I think there's stores that you want to know, places where they're going to remember you by your first name. So I think it actually maybe it makes you easier to move around because you can maybe get acclimated towards the stores in your community more quickly. We actually um, have some people even on the Mercado team who have jumped to different cities during COVID, working out of you know Hawaii and different cities, and Mercado's there, so they're able to just jump to different markets. Looks like a lot of people are going to be hitting you up on LinkedIn. Based on the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it right now. Um, cool. But thanks again, Bobby. This was awesome.